I'm going to process a recording of a bass guitar, so let's just import it into Pro Tools as a new track. And it's not that fantastic playing, but it will do for the purpose. Okay, we'll hear more, more of that later on. I'm going to use that as a reference, so I'm going to make two duplicates of that exact track. Number of duplicates, two. And okay, so I've got my reference here. This will be my reference. And these will be the tracks that I process. Let's go into the mix page and see what we've got here. Okay, we seem to have got an awful lot of inserts today, but uh, we're just going to use a few of them. What I'm going to do is uh, band split the bass. So the reference, I'll just mute it for the moment, and I'm going to put an EQ plugin in here, and I'm going to put an EQ, EQ plugin in here as well. So let's just deal with this one first. We've got all these bands active. I think it might make it a little bit more neat if I only activate the bands that I'm actually going to use. I'm going to filter this one with a low pass filter, a low pass filter. So let's have 24 decibels per octave, and I'm going to type in 250 hertz. So let's listen to that and see what it sounds like. Okay, and in the other one, once again, I'll make it nice and neat because that's the way that I like it. And this one, we're going to use the high pass filter. We'll make that 24 decibels per octave again, and I'll make it the same 250 hertz. So if we listen to this one now. So what we can do is process so what we can do is process the high frequency band independently of the low frequency band. This isn't something you'd want to do every time. To be honest, it's something you do. Just have a play around and see what it sounds like, see if you can get some benefit from it. This clearly is not going to be a bass guitar orientated track, but it's suitable material to start off with. It is actually a real bass guitar. It's not a sampled bass. So we've got something which is organic, shall we say, to work with. Uh, what we'll do now is just... Uh, listen to those tracks um, in comparison. So I highlight both of those. I can make them into a, a group. So now I can solo them on and off together. So we can compare these two versions. Let's start with the original. There's a slight level difference there, so I think we'll just take that down a bit. Okay, that's near enough. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do something with the, the high band. I think we'll just leave the low band as it is, and we'll do something with the high band and see what we can, we can achieve with it. I'm going to put a compression plug in, and I'm going to use this Waves emulation of the um, Universal Audio 1176. And let's try the blue version, and we'll take the analog nastiness off. So let's hear just this track compressed. I can, uh, with my keyboard shortcuts, I can just solo that one track, even though they're grouped together. Okay, not a lot happening there, so we're going to have to increase the input level. Okay, that doesn't sound too bad. It sounds like the kind of oh, didn't mean to do that. Sounds like the kind of grungy, gnarly effect that I think would suit this bass guitar recording. So let's just adjust the level of that to mix it in to something which sounds nice. Okay. 
OK, I quite like that. Let's compare it with the original because we want to know whether we're making a difference and whether we're making an improvement. OK, so clearly we've got some extra definition in there. Well, we've got a bit of extra level, so we'll compensate for that a bit. OK, I'm rather liking that edginess that the sound's got. It's the kind of thing that if you had a congested mix with lots of distorted guitars and things like that, you might want that so the bass guitar, uh, I don't like the expression, cuts through. But um, in this case, literally, it would be useful um, to compete against a lot of distorted other instruments. But it would depend on the context of the track. Um, don't do anything unless you like the result, I think, is the motto there. Let's, uh, you see, I've left a little slot here because I've got this feeling that I want to put a harmonic generation plug in and I'm going to use the um, the fab filter Saturn okay and I think I'll just use it just on its default setting so we'll go back to just that one it's not making much difference, so I'm going to play around with the controls until I hear something which is distinctly different. We've got the drive control here, which will in increase the amount of harmonics. I'm just going to leave these controls here. And we might use the tone controls and just uh, see what happens with them. So let's go. Good, I think that's making a distinct difference. And that's the kind of thing that I want to hear. I want to hear that difference. When you've got a distinct difference that's clearly audible, then you've got something you can work with and you can tone it down if you need to. I seem to notice a little bit of noise in the background. Let's just, in the background, let's just see where that's coming from. It's not the EQ. Well, it seems like it's the Saturn. It's a combination of the Saturn and the compression that's making that noise audible. Uh, we don't like noise in general, but sometimes we can just accept it as a bit of extra texture. Let's make a comparison again. Wow, that bass player needs to uh, tighten up on some of those changes. But uh, never mind, let's press on. In the context of a whole song, that kind of error in the bass, it can sometimes give it uh, interest and texture rather than being perceived as an error as such. There's a fine line between something being human and being too perfect. And when something's too perfect, it, it becomes uninteresting to listen to. Uh, one interesting test we might try here is to copy these Plug in to copy that one and that one over to the reference. Ooh, <laughs> quite a lot of noise there. And we'll see what the difference is. Uh, I've got a feeling that this isn't going to sound very good, but let's just try it. Okay, we've got a bit of peaking there. Uh, it should be within the dynamic range of the system, but we'd have to bring that down on the master um, or put a, a trim plug in up there, perhaps. Oh, let's do that. Let's, um, let's bring down the gain here. So we want the other and we want the trim. So let's bring that down a bit. Okay, the level's not quite the same. Let's just uh, make that more similar. Well, 
Well, I don't know. You could prefer either. Uh, so what we've done is we have made a difference, but we could have done it in a different way. And that is often the case with audio in general and mixing in particular. Let's just go back to this one. I think we'll uh, leave the reference for now. I think we've heard that enough. Uh, but here, would it be possible perhaps to put in an expander so we don't have so much that noise when nothing's playing? We can use just the standard expander there. And I'll solo this track. Oh, try again. That one. So the expander is just taking out that noise. All we've got to do is make sure that it doesn't affect the bits that we want to hear. So we'll just play it through a little bit. That seems all right just on the default settings. The expander or the gate is something which you can play around with a lot to get the right settings. And sometimes it's really tricky to get it spot on and not to get any uh, funny effects coming out. But this time it's just worked straight out of the box. So we've killed that noise and we've got a track we can work with. Let's compare the two again. I'll just take these uh, plugins out one by one so you can see what I'm doing and I'll just put that down to uh, back to zero dB. So let's just compare the, the whole thing. Okay, and that's it. Fun with the bass guitar. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.